Hey, come see us in Ashland, Virginia, Athens, Georgia, Rutherford, New Jersey at the Icarus Festival, and Minneapolis, Minnesota. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. Bill Maher is, I guess, on a book tour. I guess he wrote a book. And oh, what is it? So I don't know even, uh, but he's he keeps getting he's going on right wing media, and because he thinks he's going to be welcome because he's anti woke and he's <laughs> pro Israel, but they keep bringing up stuff that he's. It just shows how much he's ingested in problem. Like I want to say, I don't, I don't personally. I might know some of his writers. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. I haven't looked at the list of them. I used to know some of them. I know some. But can I just say this to Bill Barr's writers? You're doing him no favors. You're doing him no favors by keeping him a, a dumb fucking moron because that's what he is. And he goes and gets humiliated. He was humiliated on Greg Gutfeld. He's humiliated on Megyn Kelly. You want to watch? So I'm just saying, you're not doing your... your I, if I was Bill Barr, I would be pissed off. Wouldn't he come back to some of his producers and his writers and go, hey, how come nobody told me, told me that Hillary Clinton has been denying the election for the last four years? Hey, how come nobody told me that cops weren't actually killed on January 6th? Hey, how come nobody told me any of this stuff? How come nobody told me that the Ukraine war didn't start with Putin's invasion? How come nobody told me about the Nakba? How come nobody told me anything? Okay, wait. Uh, you would Jimmy, think he would say that to his writers. Think that? Why would you think that? He because he's getting embarrassed. He was going to go back to work during the strike with no writers. With no writers. So why? So oh, maybe clearly, that's why. So like, since writers don't give a shit if he looks like a moron. That's it, right? Half of them think the same shit as him. Okay? But the other half know. can't. Well, you ever been in a writer's room? Do you understand how it works? No. You you serve the master. No, I've never been in a I always okay. wanted well, to have never it. been a joke butler, so you don't get it. Yeah. No. I served <laughs> as a joke butler for many years, for many minor nobles. Okay. Not me. Okay, so here, here he goes. Here is downstairs. Listen, I was listen, upstairs, downstairs. Listen to this. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, of course, is the original election denier. I'm sure you voted for her in 16. Well, she's not an election denier. She, she absolutely was the OG uh, election denier. She, first of all, she came out before the sun had risen to concede the election to Trump. And then, okay, so first of all, when you say first of all, after that, you should have a legitimate point. <laughs> but he doesn't. He or doesn't. A second of all, or or even a second of all. Uh, so here, Bill Barr though has that special touch that he can make you agree with Megyn Kelly. Watch, watch this. The here, here we go. And the next four years, saying he was illegitimate. He was an illegitimate president. She. Okay, well, first of all, saying so, she didn't say he was an illegitimate. Yes, well, she well, did. You tell me exactly what she said. She said those uh, exact words <laughs> repeatedly. I believe he knows he's an illegitimate president. Okay. Uh, I mean, oh, she okay. conceded the election. Whether okay. uh, whether you're interpreting her uh, disappointment at, win at losing it uh, as the same thing as Trump not conceding it, I don't know that, if that's where you're getting it from. But again, it's a tremendous false equivalency. To, you could ask Hillary Clinton right now who won that election. She will tell you. Donald Trump won now the election. Now she knows she has to because of what she, Trump has she done. She came out that night she in, her, in her dark the election. purple suit and conceded the election. Correct. And then, spent the and then spent the next four years trying to convince us it was not legitimate. That's right. So, but first, first of all, this just in, uh, Bill Maher is a smug, warmongering whoremonger who literally <laughs> knows nothing. <laughs> in case you didn't know. That so here's Kelly's big story. <laughs> no, I've, I've played this clip on the show many times. I'll play it again. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. I like how she says that. You can run the best campaign. I mean, I didn't, obviously. <laughs> I lost to Donald Trump. How good is that? Here's what she says. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. So, uh, but of course, that's in the past. Right. That's uh, and if anyone does not want to look at the past these days, it's Bill Maher. Bill Maher has been on the wrong side of things so often. It's like he was driving in London. Uh, I'm calling him. Come Bill. on, Kurt. It's like he was driving in London. I guess. I'm like uh, uh, Bill. Well, Kurt does Bill, not give it up if he doesn't like it. Bill Mahor. I'm going to call him <laughs> like Ma M U H or. So, I mean, Hillary thought that the candidate she directly orchestrated to run against her so she could win is illegitimate. You remember the Pied Piper strategy? Yeah. That was Hillary Clinton literally picked Donald Trump to run against and they got their wish and she lost to them. This is so. Um, they did the plot of the producers, basically. Uh, 
Yeah, they did. It was a laugh hit. Yes. It was a comedy hit, yeah. So let me, let's listen to it again. You can run the best campaign. <laughs> you he can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. You could have the election stolen from you by idiot voters. Yeah. Well, she said our democracy, not yours. Yeah. We have a republic. That's right. That means the democracy is at her level. Uh, you could fit all the love Hillary has for this country into a book and put it on the bargain shelf. Put it that way. I mean, how about just humanity, her kids, her what? I mean, that, where do you think these lizard rumors come from? These absolutely silly lizard rumors, they don't come out of nowhere. So here, you know, I think Matt Orfala put this together, I think. Here's 10, I'm only going to play a little bit of it. Here's 10 minutes of not only Hillary Clinton, but Democrats and news media completely uh, uh, denouncing and denying the election. was. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. How can you win with Russian interference, though? That's, That's a real what I'm thing. scared about no, in 2020. But, but rightly. Because right. I think he's an illegitimate president that didn't really win. So how do you, you know, fight against that in 2020? You are absolutely right. He's an illegitimate president in my mind. Would you be my vice presidential candidate? For- <laughs> Folks, look, I absolutely agree. Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. He lost the election. And he was put in the office because the Russians interfered. Trump knows he's an illegitimate president. The president or elect, although legally elected, is not legitimate. I don't see the president elect as a legitimate president. You said you believe that Russia's interference altered the outcome of the election. I do. We have a president who, if in fact it is proven, uh, has been assisted by the Russians and may in fact not be a legitimate president. The one thing that Trump is fearful of uh, when it comes to his being president is that finally we will see how illegitimate his victory actually was. I have an objection. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina. I object because people are horrified. He's an illegitimate president. Do you believe Trump is a legitimate president? What I believe is that there's no question that the outcome of this election was affected by the Russian interference. There absolutely is a cloud of illegitimacy. So that legitimacy is a question. Yes. So that was a very tainted election. and in that sense, it's illegitimate. Why do you think the president is going to such great lengths to essentially prove that he beat you? Because he knows he didn't. He knows he's an illegitimate president. Stolen emails. Stolen drone. Stolen drone. Stolen election. Welcome to the world of unprecedented Trump. So do you believe President Trump is an illegitimate president? <laughs> Based on what I just said, which I can't retract. <laughs> So um, not one Democrat, not one elected Democrat had integrity, not one. And Bill Maher lives in such a bubble, he didn't see any of this. He certainly doesn't watch this show because I played that over and over on this show. Why would I watch this show, Jimmy? <laughs> Please. And That's this, not really your thing. It's my thing. And and by the way, so the, the worst thing in the world you can do is is deny an election. That's the, the, the new thing because Trump denies that. misunderstanding. They're not talking. So Bill Maher did the same thing Chelsea Clinton said on The View. When they go, well, didn't, didn't, are they all say this over and over again? And it's all about, no, she, she conceded. By the way, she didn't concede right away. I thought she didn't come out. She was so upset. Before the sun came up, she said it. And Trump didn't concede before the like he asked his lawyers to check if he want he basically did what al gore did okay like yeah that's you're supposed to worry about the idiots that might do something well you're that's the classic terrorism not controlling the animals and so now everybody is memory holding when they all denied an election result but that's not denying it because so, they don't matter who matters is the leaders that day, but he, yes, and they so it doesn't mean the same thing to him as it means to everybody but here, else. But but now they're saying to just to do that is bad. And here's here's Keith Olbermann. He did it in 2004. Listen to what Keith Olbermann said about 2004. There is a small but blood-curdling group of reports of voting irregularities and possible fraud, principally in Ohio and Florida. And that group of reports is moving from that end of the spectrum in which believers are also likely to be wearing hats made out of Reynolds wrap, other end of the spectrum in which the believers are going to the General Accounting Office and perhaps the FBI. Ohio has other problems tonight. The state reports 92,000 presidential votes did not count. I think it's perfect. It looks great. The mainstream newspaper, the Cincinnati Inquirer, reports that officials in Warren County, Ohio, 
Ohio, locked down their administration building last Tuesday night to prevent anybody from observing the vote count. 69% of voters registered Democrats, 24% Republicans, yet President Bush got 7,738 votes and Senator Kerry just 2,180. In Holmes County, in the Panhandle, seven Democrats for every two Republicans in the district. Bush beat Kerry 6410 to 1810. In Florida counties where optical scanning of paper ballots was not used, no such violent swings were reported. Counties with heavy Democratic registration voted Democratic. Counties with heavy Republican registration voted Republican. The six weeks since the election, somewhere around 20% of the nation's citizens have continued to doubt the election, and much of the other 80% have dismissed those doubts largely by saying, well, how come the Democrats aren't screaming about it? Or if there's a problem, where's the FBI? Or how come I haven't read about this in the New York Times? Our third story in the countdown today, the New York Times reported that the senior Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee was asking the FBI to investigate what he called inappropriate and likely illegal election tampering in Ohio. That affidavit by Cheryl Eaton, a Democrat, contends that last Friday, in advance of the recount in Ohio, an employee of the company that made the vote counting software used in their county returned there, and according to Conyers' letter to the FBI, he modified the computer tabulator, learned which precinct was planned to be the subject of the initial test recount, and made further alterations based on that information, and advised the election officials how to manipulate the machinery so that the preliminary hand recount matched the machine count. So this isn't the first time that prominent Democrats, prominent people, people like Keith Olbermann, the guy with the biggest Trump term, has said that the elections are illegitimate. This isn't the first time that there's been credible evidence that there's some, some shenanigans happening with the election. But all of a sudden, again, just as soon as Trump did it, that's when it became the biggest crime in history, just like when Trump's MAGA uh, supporters went and protested at the Capitol. That's the worst thing that ever happened. Black Lives Matter. People. I saw Cornell West. I saw Cornel West give a speech yesterday where he said, imagine if those were black people at the Capitol, what would have happened? Uh, nothing. Because I don't know if you saw what happened to Black Lives Matter protesters. Black Lives Matter protesters, I don't think anybody got prosecuted. They weren't welcome for, for, inside, I believe. Right? They burned, <laughs> they burned down police stations in Atlanta. Nothing, as far as I can tell, nothing happened to anybody. But uh, people who were just peacefully protesting on January 6th, they, they're being thrown in jail for 10 and 20 years. People who weren't even there are being thrown in jail for 10 and 20 years. So again, uh, Bill Maher, Cornell West, they all live in the same bubble. It's an ivory tower. It's a millionaire's bubble. And they never get, get introduced to the facts. So uh, Bill Maher, again, humiliating himself over and over. When he when Bill Boy was Bill Burr on it when he said, who the hell are you? What do you? He goes, this is my lane. I know this. You, Bill Maher doesn't know shit about current events or politics. The servants He knows that. nothing. <laughs> They read me the news. The servants read me the New I York Times. He people who people who think whore. they people <laughs> people who think they know current events or politics or what's happening in the world because they read the New York Times, or the Washington Post, or they watch CNN, Fox, or MSNBC are the most uninformed, propagandized, dumb motherfuckers in the world. Okay, you know why? Because they get, we use, you, because they think it's real, what they're wait, reading. In the video, you played it. They did. It's hypnosis. You say the thing three times. It is an illegitimate president. Illegitimate president. Yeah, Russian interference. I've heard it everywhere. Present. I heard it everywhere. So, so even back then in 2004, which was a stupid time to be alive, okay? Yeah. It even sounds less like pure neuro-linguistic programming back then when it was also that. But now they have turned the stupid meter on it where we're just going all hypnotic. Sh so the uh, illegitimate president, there's a cloud of illegitimacy. They all repeat the same. Well, line. just and the new one today is that there's no there's a, there's no equivalence between Hamas and Israel. That's yeah. a, they're all saying the same. I script. believe America is a force for good in the world. There's That's, no equivalence. That, yes. They, they all they repeat slogans at you. Hey, picture this. Picture <laughs> this. Ready? You're planning a summer getaway. What to eat, where to visit, what to do, and where to sleep. But wait, what about the comfort of home while you're away? That's where Cozy Earth comes in. I actually do like Cozy Earth and all their products. They are fantastic. Right now, you can get 35% off with code Jimmy at checkout. Cozy Earth isn't just about creating luxurious bedding and loungewear. It's about elevating and transforming your entire travel experience. Their bedding is so soft and buttery smooth it actually is. It beats any hotel sheets 
I've slept on, it actually does. And guess what? Cozy Earth's bedding comes in these adorable totes. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Making it travel friendly and hassle free. Plus, can we talk about how cute their loungewear is? Can we? Their temperature regulating bamboo joggers and pullover crew crew ensure that you stay cool and comfy on those long flights. That actually does sound good. But hey, I know not everyone is hitting the road or the skies this summer, and that's totally okay. Whether you're exploring far off lands or creating your own sanctuary at home, Cozy Earth has everything you need to make every moment feel like pure bliss. Trust me, once you've experienced the comfort and quality of Cozy Earth, you'll never want to go back. I actually don't want to go back. I actually use their stuff in my, on my beds. It's fantastic. My one bed. Uh, want to rest easy on vacation? <laughs> Take a trip to GoZEarth.com slash Jimmy. Then type in my personal code Jimmy at checkout, and you're going to get an exclusive 35% off. Oh. That's promo code Jimmy for 35% off. It's my way of saying thanks for listening. And one favor, please choose podcasts in the survey after ordering, and then choose my show from the drop-down menu. And thanks, and happy sleeping. <laughs> Here on tour in Ashland, Virginia, Athens, Georgia, Rutherford, New Jersey, Minneapolis, Ontario, California, Las Vegas, Chicago, Illinois, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. (laughs) 